So today we're going to talk about Laslet's cluster. Laslet's cluster is arguably the most popular utilized cluster of provocation tests, uh, tests and measures for the SIJ. Now, before we get to that and actually going through each one of the steps and tests, we first need to appreciate that only is Laslet's cluster utilized if the clinician has successfully cleared the lumbar spine and cleared the hip. The idea that you would completely clear the lumbar spine and the hip with finding no reproduction of the comparable sign is very small. So the amount of times that Laslet's cluster is actually utilized would be pretty small in terms of actual percentages. Additionally, in recent years, Mark Laslet himself has come out and has said that based upon emerging evidence and research, that Laslet's clusters may actually be of harm to the clinical community because it reduces SIJ and pelvic girdle pain down to mechanical behavior where if there's three out of the five versus two out of the five, then it's this. In reality, pelvic girdle pain and SIJ related pain is far more complex. Having a mechanical uh, uh, kind of uh, orientation at times as well as psychological, social, behavioral, neurological, and so on. And so we need to hold those uh, various components and domains in the back of our mind as we utilize this test and recognize that while there is some convincing evidence to suggest the use of the test, there is also a good amount of emerging literature and evidence to suggest that this does not address the whole patient or whole person that is before us. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive right in. For Laszlo's clusters, we're going to assume that our patient has already been screened for the lumbar spine and the hip, and so we're going to go straight into the cluster itself. So for this, we're going to allow our patient to lay down on their back. There are a total of five tests or measures. Uh, there is SIJ gapping and compression. Those are the first two. Uh, from there, we move to a thigh thrust a sacral thrust, and then finally the fifth and most provocative is what's known as Gainsland's. Now, for the first two, SIJ compression and, and uh, distraction, it's not altogether the most comfortable just based off of the hand placements. However, you want to be specific to where the symptoms are being felt. It's not so much where your hands are being placed, but rather it's on the posterior aspect at the sacroiliac joint itself. So, first and foremost, we need to identify our uh, ASIS, um, if there is uh, clothing or a belt or something like that in the way, just be mindful of that. You're going to use kind of the hypothenar eminence of both hands, identify the ASIS, and then you're going to push outwardly opposing. What that does is it gaps the front, but it compresses in the back. And so we would come here and we would push and hold and sustain that pressure ask if symptoms are better, worse, no different. And then we're going to compress anterior, which gaps posterior with our second one, which is we're going to come here on the outside of both and then provide our force there. So SIJ gapping and distraction are the first two. From here, we move to the thigh thrust. Now the thigh thrust is performed with one leg brought up into kind of a, a flex position, uh, be mindful that clothing can kind of restrict some of the range of motion, so you might want to adjust as necessary from here. Once you come up into this position, uh, you have to be able to thrust kind of straight down through the axis, if you will, of the thigh, the femur. So in this case, we need to bring our table down just a little bit. Additionally, you need to be able to create some shear force and so uh, how this test is defined is you're actually going to roll the patient away from you for a second, find the SIJ posteriorly with your other opposing hand, and then roll the patient back onto that such that you're stabilizing or providing some support uh, to the sacrum itself, all right? Uh, the sacrum then is stabilized. What's going to happen here is you're going to thrust through the thigh into the acetabulum, and then by uh, that aspect into the pelvis itself. So again, set up, you're gonna roll away, find the sacrum, roll back, take up the slack here, 
Um, you're kind of in your deltopectoral triangle, if you can imagine that. That's where the, the, the knee is going to lie. And then you're going to quickly thrust down, okay? Our fourth test then is the sacral thrust test. And so for this, we're gonna ask our patient to actually roll onto their stomach and into a prone position. The sacral thrust test is performed on the sacrum, and in essence, you can imagine that you're doing CPR on the sacrum. You're going to vigorously thrust three to five times um, in a posterior to anterior direction. And so the setup is about the same as if you were performing uh, CPR. So you're going to interlace or interlock the hands. The palm goes right over the sacrum or spine of the sacrum, and then it's going to be three to five quick thrusts for symptom exacerbation or reproduction of the concordant sign. As you can imagine, if you do have SIJ pain, that in and of itself is not very pleasant. And so this is a progressive uh, test cluster in terms of exacerbation. Our final test and arguably our most provocative test is Gainsland's. We're gonna ask our patient to come over onto their back again into a supine position and then slide all the way to the edge of the table such that their legs are off the edge, perfect. They're gonna lay back, and then from this position, what you want to accomplish is in essence a shearing force at the pelvis and the SIJ. So we're gonna ask the individual to bring their knee up towards their stomach. I like to use their foot as kind of a prop here on my shoulder such that I can ensure that they're not going to uh, kind of uh, come out of the position. We're going to lean in as far as we can, and then on this side, we're gonna push down as far as we can. Now, at this point, um, if the posterior aspect of the thigh is contacting the table, as it is in this case, we need to ask our patient to slide down just a little bit further. Perfect, rock back. We're gonna block their foot here, and then we're gonna provide that shear force again uh, through the SIJ and pelvis. Go ahead and sit on up. All right, so that is Laslett's cluster. Again, a total of five tests and measures, beginning with SIJ gapping and distraction, moving into thigh thrust and sacral thrust, and then ending with the most provocative, that being Gainsland's. Uh, where the literature supports this, again, is after completing a thorough lumbar and hip screening and examination process. So have a go with these and let me know if there's any questions.